changes your name. Today is a day of breakthrough. Did y'all feel that? He changes your name. <laughs> Come on. You know, the other day I, I, was, uh, I was in the office and I was just spending time with the Lord and I'm doing a study on the, on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And, and all of a sudden the Lord took me to Isaiah 43. And I began to read Isaiah 43 and I'm like, I started getting wrecked. So I went on and I did a Facebook Live video and I know a lot of you guys that are in here probably are not really familiar with the Facebook Live, so that's okay. But I really felt there was something about that scripture. So today what I'm going to do is, is we're going to have fun this morning. And I'm going to go through this chapter with us today. And as we go through, I feel that today is going to be a day of breakthrough. Today is going to be a day of renewing for you. Today is going to be a day of awakening. Hmm. He changes your name. So, in Isaiah 43, it starts off saying this. But now, O Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you, O Israel. The one who formed you says, now listen, this is the Lord speaking. He says this. He says, do not be afraid. For I have ransomed you. Now, in this passage, the word ransom, this is what ransom means. It means it's a sum of money or some other type of payment that is demanded for the release of a prisoner. It's a payoff it's a payment, it's a price, it's a sum. It's something that was given for somebody to be released. You see, and here it's saying, Oh Israel, I have formed you, and do not be afraid, because I have ransomed you. Who is Jacob in this situation? Genesis 32 through 27 through 28 says this. And he said unto them, what is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, thy name shall be called mo no more Jacob, but Israel. He says, for the prince has the power with God and with men and has prevailed. You see, Jacob wrestled with God. Jacob went through some obstacles, and this is a representation. This is a representation of even us and our inheritance. I want you to hear what I'm saying. Jacob wrestled with God. That word wrestled means that he went through some battles. How many of us have wrestled with God? We've wrestled with God. And even then, even though he wrestled with God, it's said that he was sought to be righteous. The whole plan, the whole reason why he wrestled, everything that Jacob went through was for one purpose. So that he may see the righteousness of God inside of him. Even then, Jesus had not even come on the scene yet. Even then, that is a picture of the original DNA, the original picture of how God intended us to be, was to be righteous, to be made holy, to be made one, to be like His image, to, be, to look like Him, the Father. Then we go down. It says, I have called you by name. You are mine. Listen to that right there. He's calling you by name. Glenda! Carol! 
I'm calling you. (laughs) He calls us by name. And then he says this, because you are mine. You are mine, he says. When you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Listen, I'm not going to sit here and paint a, a little picture. Pastors, evangelists, prophets, and teachers, apostles, whatever title somebody wants to give themselves or whatever respectfully, rightfully, so they have. You go through things. Transparent, transparency brings breakthrough. If you act like you got it all together, then you're operating out of a spirit of pride and you need to get delivered and set free from that. Bam. We go through things. We have bad days. You have bad days. And it's okay. It's okay to have a bad day. It's okay for you to to feel like you're in the water and you feel like you can't come out and you feel like you're in this river of difficulty. That's okay. It's how you respond is what makes a difference. When you choose to get yourself out of that place, that's the difference. To know that you're a son and a daughter and to know the nature of God Listen, even then, in the time when Jacob and, and, and he was always sought to see the righteous person that God created him to be. How he created us to be. And that's how you and I were created. To know through the lenses of the finished work that, that who is God and who is He inside of us and what do we have to give? Because we have an inheritance. So He says this, when you go through the deep waters, I will be with you. Uh, when you go through the rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Here's one that I've been through. Yeah, it's transparent right here. When you walk through the fires of oppression, because see, the enemy throws fiery darts. And sometimes we look around and everything feels like it's collapsing or everything looks like it's falling apart and you don't know what to do. This is what the Lord says. He says, when you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned. (sighs) Listen, you will not be burned. You will not be burned. It says, for the flames will not consume you. And then it says, do you know why? It says, for I am the Lord, your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave you Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave you Ethiopia and Seba in your place. And others were given in exchange for you. And I traded their lives for you. Do you see how this is a picture? This is a picture. Back then. But now Jesus comes on the scene. And I have given you my only begotten Son. That whosoever would believe in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Because He sent His Son not to condemn the world, but through Him we might be saved. And then He says this. He did it because you are precious to Him. 
You are honored, and I love you. Can you imagine hearing God say audibly like that? You're precious to me, and I love you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for that. And then he goes on to say this one more time. Do not be afraid. <laughs> See, why is he saying that again? Because if the Lord has to repeat himself, that means there's, there's some kind of emphasis on what he's trying to say. He wants you to get this to your mind, into your spirit. He wants you to realize, listen, you're going to go through some things, but it's okay. There's going to be fires of oppression, but it's okay. There's going to be rivers of difficulty, but it's okay. But I tell you, do not be afraid. Oh, isn't that good? Don't be afraid. That word afraid doesn't just mean fear. It means don't be worried. Don't be anxious. Don't walk with your head down like you're defeated. Don't be afraid. And then he says, I will gather you and your children from the east and the west, and I will say to the north and the south, whew, listen to this, bring my sons and daughters back. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> bring my sons and daughters back. To Israel from the distant corners of the earth. You see, last week we had an, I had an encounter with the Lord, and I and I shared that. How I saw the Lord writing restitution checks. Do you remember that? We talked about restitution, and I saw the Lord sitting and he was writing these checks for restitution. And it wasn't about money. It wasn't about, I mean, it could be, but it wasn't about money. In this encounter, it was about the land. It was about, it was about the promise. It was about your life and your ministry and, and your family. Everything that the enemy had stolen. He says, I am writing checks of resti restitution. You see, when he says, I will gather your children from the east and the west, and I will say to the north and the south, bring my sons and daughter back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. This is a picture of the Lord restoring. That's the season that we're at right now. Every one of us in this place, the Lord wants to restore. He wants to restore even the people that are supposed to be here. He wants to restore them. Man. People that were hurt, people that were left premature, things that they spiritually allowed themselves to have a spiritual abortion, things that were killed premature. The Lord is restoring that. And then, it goes on to say, bring all who claim me as their God, for I have, them, I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Bring out the people who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. Let me read this again. I want us to make sure we get this. And he says, bring all who claim me as their God, for I have made them in my glory, and it was I who created them. Bring out the people who have eyes but are blind and have ears but are deaf. 
He's talking right here about the spiritually dead. He's speaking about even those who with their mouth proclaim the kingdom of God. With their mouth, I'm a believer, I believe. But yet, they're still spiritually blind. And they're spiritually deaf. Because they choose to stay in that condition. It it goes on to say that, gather all the nations, assemble the people of the world, which have their idols, have foretold such things. Those that can predict what will happen tomorrow, where there are witnesses of such prediction. Let's stop right there. This is a picture of what God is saying. Listen. Get everybody who's walk, working in this spirit of witchcraft and false prophets and false doctrines and everything that they claim. And not only get them, but get those who say that they've seen it. God's demonstrating power, His love and His authority for all the nations to see. Listen, God is about to do something. Not just here, but in this nation in this planet, I love seeing the planet. It just makes it sound so like epic. But the world is his, and all of the world is, belongs to God. So I can say planet. All of planet Earth is about to experience the demonstration of the power of God. I believe it. His love and his authority. So the whole nation can see. You know what that's called? It's called harvest. It's called the harvest. We see it already. We're seeing pockets of it. We see like the call and this thing that's going to happen in New York in August. The stadium revival. Harvest time America. They're getting a stadium of 8,000 people to come and worship the Lord. And 8,000 people are going to flood the streets of New York to bring back a harvest to tell people about the goodness of God. And it's going to be in Olean, New York. That word Olean means oil. There's a fresh oil that's being released right now. It goes on to read, Who can, I'm sorry. He says, but you are my witness, O Israel, says the Lord. Now, this is the Lord releasing a word over us right now. He says, you are the witness, O Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant. You have been chosen to know me. We have been chosen to know him. To believe in me. And to understand that I alone am God. And there is no other God that has ever been and there will ever be. Yes, I am the Lord. And there is no other Savior. First, I predicted your rescue. I saved you and I proclaimed you to the world. No foreign God has ever done this. Listen. Thank you, Father. We have to understand who we are, sons and daughters. That we have been made righteous. Thank you, Father. I thank you for the fresh wind. <laughs> I thank you for the fresh wind. goes on to say this. From eternity to eternity, I am God. And no one can snatch anyone out of my hand. Listen, we are in the palm of the Father's hand. Alex, there's nothing 
anybody can do. There's no demon in hell that has the authority to pluck you out. And then it says this. No one can undo what I have done. You know, I, I find that beautiful because that's where, where the Lord just kind of told me to stop. That no one can undo what I have done. And it's funny because I remember when we came to Ohio our very first time. We came to Ohio our very first time. They brought us in to be a speaker. I want to say it was in May. Or I'm not sure when it was the exact date, but we, we were here. And I remember being at the hotel, and I, 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 I was spending time with the Lord, and he gave me a word for the house. And the word for the house was out of Isaiah 22, 22. And the whole entire time before that, I kept seeing the 2 2 2 2 one, 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 four, 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 five, five, this whole number of things. And I'm not a number guy. But I had the two, 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 two. And the Lord said, the season that this house was in, I'm talking about emerging streams right now, that the season that we were entering into was the Isaiah 22, 22. And then the Lord said, and tell them that there's a double, double blessing on that word. Double blessing. Not a double, but a double double. How many of you like double double? Yeah. <laughs> double double. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because the Lord always gives, like, He gives you confirmation on the little things. And I remember because, you know, when we were here visit, we were in Ohio, and I said, man, I want a Starbucks. I know, it doesn't. But I want it. <laughs> I wanted a coffee. I love Starbucks because we, as, that's one thing. As a traveling ministry, it's like Starbucks is like awesome. But there was no Starbucks anywhere near Stryker. So I remember I went in and I went to a place called Tim Hortons. Is that what it was called? Tim Hortons. They got really good coffee. So I go there and I'm in the drive-thru and I said, yeah, can I get the I want the, the double, um, you know, the, two shot, three shots of the, of the espresso, because I like it like that, strong. And then the lady comes back, and she says this to me, oh, you want the double-double. And I'm like, I didn't even catch it at first. And I was like, she was like, yeah. Like, yeah, I remember you're like, yeah. And then I was like, double-double. And I said, yes, I want the double-double. I remember the double-double because, see, the Lord wants us to remember the words and the promises, things that he spoke in the past. Because I didn't even remember that. But the word that we spoke, that the Lord gave us for the house was, you were entering into your Isaiah 22, 22, and there's a double-double blessing, double-double anointing, double-double glory on that. And this is what he says. And I will, give you to the, I will give you the keys to the house of David. You see, this is what, the, what he's saying right here. No one can undo what I have done. Nobody can undo what God has done. I will give you the keys to the house of David. And I will open doors that no man can shut. And I will shut the doors and no one can open. And then the Lord says there's a double-double on that. So I believe that and I receive that today. I receive that. Father, we call down the double-double, God. We call down your blessings, God. Jesus. And it's about the open doors. <laughs> and it's so funny because I got an invitation the other day 
to go minister at some, uh, in Kentucky somewhere. And the name of the place is called The Open Doors. I don't, you can't make that stuff up. I haven't even told them yes. But it says, The Open Doors likes to, he said, The Open Doors wants to invite you to come. And, I'm like, The Open Doors wants you to come. Huh. That'll preach. That'll preach. And then my wife last night, she comes and she had an encounter with the Lord. Two, three, four o'clock, I don't know what time. And she woke up telling me about the doors. I want to come on up here. This is just a season that we're stepping into. And the Lord this morning, like late last night, woke me up. And he told me about Matthew 7, 7. He said, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. That's what he woke me up saying. And, and so I said, I said, okay, God. It was, it was funny because Pete's talking about the double-double. Because <laughs> I was in here trying to get things ready for today for our, our missions meal. And I was so frustrated yesterday. Like, I'm very transparent. And my husband knows this. But I was very frustrated. I came to the kitchen, and both of the sinks were clogged up. Okay? And here I am, like, trying to get everything together to cook and do all this stuff. And so Jay comes. And Jay's like trying to plunge this thing and trying to push it through. And then I come and we both have plungers. And Jay's like, we're going to do this together. <laughs> Talk about double double, right? So me and Jay both get the plungers and we push it through together. And we're like the coach out of Jay. I'm like, yeah, we need to get a high five. And, we, and then all of a sudden we're standing there and we're waiting for it to go down. And we got so excited because we felt the breakthrough. Like, I know it sounds silly, but what happens in the natural is happening in the spirit. Things get clogged up inside of our bellies sometimes in our spirit. And the double-double Pete's talking about, like, it took both of us together to unclog that thing for things to run the way they're supposed to run. And I was so excited because of that. And I was like, God, this whole door thing is, like, for real. This past Thursday, uh, some of you were here, and Peter went into this prophetic mode about the door. And the Lord saying, I'm standing at the door and I'm knocking, are you going to open the door for me? And look, in Revelations 3.20, the Lord began to share this with me this morning. He says, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Let me tell you another translation of that. The NLT says it like this. It says, look, I stand at the door and knock, and if you hear my voice, open the door. I will come in, and I will share a meal together as friends. That was so powerful. Like, I just want to, I'm at the door already. Like, I'm knocking, like, let me in. Can you hear my voice? I'm calling you by name, like what Pete was saying. I'm calling you by name. Can you hear me calling you by name? Hear me knocking at the door that you're going to open up the door so we can sit together at the table and have a meal together as friends. God's calling you his friend this morning. Like, hey, you're my friend. I want to sit down and fellowship with you. I want to sit down and have words with you. I just want to enjoy a meal together with you. And we stress out over the silliest things when we make a mistake. And God's all, I don't even care about your mistakes. I just want to sit in fellowship and be your friend. Because you know what? Your friends, if you really think about your friends, they don't care about your mistakes either. They just want to be your friend and be there for you. And that's the way the Lord is this morning. He's just, he's knocking at the door and he's saying, hey, I just want to be your friend. Will you open the door? Will you hear my voice? And let me come sit with you today so we can enjoy a meal together. 
Who doesn't enjoy having a meal with Jesus and just sitting together with him like a friend and tell him everything you want to tell him. Share your heart with him. Pour your everything unto the Lord so he can hear you and he can help us through those situations as friends do. I thought that was so awesome and I was so blessed by that even this morning when I got woken up by it. He's like, it, it, there was a transition that happened. It wasn't just the knocking at the door, but it was the answering of the door to be, we have to respond to him because he wants to be our friend. But if we don't respond to him, then we don't get that other part that we're missing in our lives. So when he calls your name by, by your name, when he calls you out by your name, you have to respond to that. So we can all stand. Father, we just welcome you. Father, even today, God, as we read, that we will not be afraid, God, for we know that you are with us. That even in the times of us and the, and the difficult rivers, God, and those fires of oppression, God, you say, do not be afraid. Even in those times of our difficult times of our life, God, where our loved ones or our spouses, God, you say, do not be afraid. Father, we thank you, God. We thank you for, for the righteousness, God. We thank you for your son, Jesus, God. We thank you for the finished work, God, that, that we have now divine access to you, God. That every blood that was shed, God, that day on Calvary, Lord, covered the sins of humanity, God. That you now call us sons and daughters. Ambassadors. Righteous heirs. Your chosen ones. <laughs> Father, help us to continue on this path and this journey, God. Lord, and we agree with heaven today. We agree with what heaven declares, God, today over our life, God, that we are more than conquerors, God, that no weapon formed against us will prosper, God, we declare, God, your goodness today. Lord, that you've changed our name. Mm. That we don't walk as orphans or as slaves, God. But as a righteous heirs. But as sons and daughters of the Most High. Father, we love you, Lord. We worship you, God. Amen. Amen. Open up our eyes. If there's been people in here that have been battling with anxiety and um, just like a uh, like stress, like like you feel like you can't breathe sometimes. God just wants to heal you this morning from that anxiety and that uh, that stress, like that just randomly comes on you and makes you feel like like almost like handicaps you because it's so crazy on you. God, I just pray right now, God, those that have anxiety problems. You're the breath that breathes into them every morning for them to wake up, God. And I pray, God, that your peace and your rest, that every storm that comes on them, God, that creates this anxiety, this stress, God, we pray that your peace and your rest be upon them even now, God. Even those that are watching online, God, that your peace and your rest would be upon them, God. And that they wouldn't have to carry anxiety, 
they wouldn't have to carry this this burden on their backs, God. But you're a God of breakthrough, God. And we just speak to that anxiety that that was never meant for any of your children to carry or to have. So we just break that right now in Jesus' name. And we replace it today with peace and with rest right now in Jesus' name.